Okay, what we're going to see now is the Chronicles of the Geese. He's going to give us his memories, his jokes, and everything else that uh, makes him special to us. So let's begin. Don't take any pictures of my legs. Uh, I prefer close friends. <laughs> Same. Uh -huh. All right, so what can you tell me about your earliest memories, or what do you know about your mom before you were born? Like, what do you... <laughs> Like, what did she tell you about where she came from, where her parents came from, some of the some of the things she went through? So, yeah, yeah. We went through having me, <laughs> and we're still still dealing with that today. That's, that's right. That's yeah, right. Yeah. That's right, sir. Um, yeah. Do you have hair in my nose? Is there any hair in your nose? There's a whole bunch of hair in your nose. Is there wrong with it? No, I don't care. <laughs> so what what? Uh, like, where did she, did she, was she born in America? Yes, my mother was born in America. So now, was her, were her parents born in America? Uh, her mother, I think, was from County Mayo, Ireland, I think. I'm not in sure. In Ireland? I think so. And what about her dad? Uh, I don't know, Steve. I okay. don't know. And did she grow because up? Because I didn't know, I didn't know my grandparents. Uh, why not? Because they were passed away. How old were How old was your mom when she had you? Uh, uh, I really couldn't tell you, Steve, because I don't have the birth certificate here. Oh, okay. I think probably she was married to my dad. She's married to her first husband. In what year I don't know, but but what happened was he was kicked by a horse in the service. He was in the army. He got kicked by a horse. World War One. World War One. Yeah, yeah. And World what was War she I. doing in the army? What was she doing? What was she doing? Yeah. What kind of work? He was in the army. Who was? Her husband. Oh, okay. Her husband. Her husband was in the service. And okay. He got kicked by a horse. Then he died. They were married, and within a year, she was a bride, a mother, and a widow. Wow. Because her first husband died from the, the, the mule kicked him in the head. What was his name? Um, okay, what was his name? Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure, Steve. I think his name was um, McAvoy. McAvoy? McAvoy, because uh, my brother Jack was uh, McAvoy, but <clears throat> and so, then I was born. So Jack came from this first husband? Yeah, Jack came from the first husband. Okay. And actually, uh, going back to the stories that Isabel told us, was that at the time that McAvoy was, uh, was adopted by the Macaulays, was it the Macaulays or someone else? But anyway, they run a, what they call an orphan train. Right. They passed through Iowa, and he was adopted off that train. This the first husband the of first grandma. First husband was was taken off that train, and he went to the McAvoy family. Was he Irish? That, that yeah, and they was named McAvoy, of course. Well, he went to the McAvoy family, but he wasn't born in that family. Well, no, I don't know. What, I don't know what nationality he was, Steve, but I'm, I'm pretty sure he was Irish. Okay. So anyway, then my aunt Pearl was also. I, I taken out the screen and adopted. That's the way they did in those right. days. Right. They were more or less adopted to help out at the farm and all that, you know. So then, anyway, uh, after Mom married my dad, I was born in uh, 8 5, 1927. And then, of course, came along uh, Larry and then Ben. And there's just two years separating Larry and I. And then, uh, there was five, five, I think six years between me and between me and my brother Vincent. So you're the second oldest. I was the second oldest. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. But uh, anyway, uh, my mother did work for the Illinois Telephone. I, actually, I was born in Chicago. You know. Why were you born in Chicago? Well, because uh, people always ask me that. Why were you born in Chicago? I said, Well, because I wanted to be near my mother. Anyway, so uh, that was that was kind of funny. <laughs> but, but, but anyway, uh, actually, Mom was working for the Illinois Bell Telephone Company, and she had a good job. But as we got older, 
she realized that she wanted to be home with us more than where she, the Illinois Bell Telephone Company, where she was making a pretty good salary, which wasn't a lot at that time. And uh, so she, she left that job and she went to doing housework for other people. It was usually ruled through by 3 o'clock in the afternoon that she was home when we got home from school. And did she have to take a pretty big cut in pay there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, she only made like maybe like three dollars for the day or something like that but three dollars at that time went a long way yeah, yeah. um yeah. now before before we go on to that did she did she graduate high school did i mean do you know anything about no, her I'm schooling sure, i'm sure she did i'm sure she did yeah but i don't know what i don't know what school okay but i'm sure she did and isabel did her sister isabel as well did she have just her sister that's it yeah just no her. no other people no, in the family no brothers no sisters just isabel that's unusual for a catholic family well, uh, maybe at that time they weren't, uh, didn't have no TV. <laughs> <laughs> what, to get them started or something? I don't or know. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, uh, to make a long story short. Now, uh, who did Isabel marry? Isabel married a guy by the name of Kelly who turned out to be a kind of a, um, a drinker. How long did he live? I mean, would, I know Isabel had Aunt Eileen, right? Huh? Isabel's daughter was Aunt Eileen? No, no. Who, who's Isabel's daughter? Marie was Isabel's daughter. Marie, that's right, Marie. Yeah, Marie was Isabel's daughter. And, and this is course. from this guy, Kelly? Yeah, and then, no, no, no. Uh, yeah, Marie was from Kelly. And Butch was from Kelly as well, her brother. Okay, so Marie and Kelly, Marie and Butch were brother and sister. Yeah, they were brother and sister, yeah, right, okay. yeah. And, uh... And then, of course, uh, uh, when Marie got married, she was only married a few days, and she sent a postcard saying, I don't like marriage. Fooey. Fooey? Really? <laughs> that was the end of that. So who, so sent, who sent that letter? Marie. Marie. To, oh, then, that, then she had Kelly. Yeah, she had Kelly, but she was sorry she got married right after she got married. Oh, okay. Fooey. Yeah. That's what she said. And Fooey. she never got married again. And, uh... No, never did. No, never did. And what happened at Isabel's husband? Uh, he ended up dying. Of what? Uh, gosh, Steve, you're going back too far. I don't know what he okay, died well, from. Okay, well, if, if Uncle Larry was around, he would probably know. Yeah. Or, Uncle J or my brother Jack, he would probably know, but I don't know. Yeah, okay. I never kept up that. All I remember is that when I was growing up in school, all four of us there, and uh, we were... We weren't the richest of families. We were kind of like everybody else at that time. We were all poor. Right. And actually, we had a, a one time we went into a house where the landlord was told that she only had three children. We had been more than that. They wouldn't have rented the house to her or the apartment. To your mom? To my mother, yes. Yeah. So at the time I got hit by the car when I was about 10 years old, that's when I got the bad ear and the skull fracture. I could have died, but I, thank God I lived. But uh, at the time I was hit, everybody was saying, well, the McCoy boy got hit, the McCoy boy got hit. And of course the landlord saw all three of my brothers standing there. He said, he's not a McCoy, he said, those are the McCoy boys. So then he found out that I was living in the house too. Oh. I was always told that I was a friend down the street. <laughs> <laughs> How did she pick you? How'd they pick you to be Don't the friend? Don't ask me. Don't ask me. So then... Uh, so whenever you were around the house, they'd say, this is our friend? It's our friend, yes. Yes, this was our friend. And so, where, how did you get hit by a car? What happened there? Uh, I was really skating in the streets. Is that with the metal wheels? Yes, yes, yes. I don't know what they were at that time. Mm. All I know is that I zigged and the car jagged. And that's when I got hit. And never got anything from it. The guy was driving a car without insurance. Oh, really? Or with the insurance, but he rode down to his house and came back and said he was driving this car. It uh, hit me, so we couldn't go after him in the right. courts, you know. So. What, uh, who was there? Who saw it happen? No, Steve, I don't know. My brother Jack. Jack was there? Yeah, but he was like skating up ahead of me and I was skating behind him. Did they, did they have ambulances back then to come get you, or how'd they get you to the hospital? You know, Steve, I don't know. Okay, it's I all right. I don't know. No, I don't know. Why did you want to um, be born in Chicago? 
I had a choice? Yeah. How did I have a choice? Well, who'd you want to be close to? What are you talking about? Close to who? Why, why were you born in Chicago? You told me you wanted because to... Because I wanted to be near my mother. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you're 10 years old when you get hit by the car. Yeah. Whoa, you got hit but, by a car? But go back. But go back. Like, uh, what do you remember prior to that? Do you remember, did you have your, your paper routes before you were 10? No, it was after, it was after that. It was after that. It so you were you didn't work until after you were 10 years old? Yeah, yeah. So you were just going to school? Just going to school, but then we got paper routes, and my brother Larry had a paper route. I had one. My brother Jack. I don't know what Jack was doing. He might have had one. I don't think so. But what anyway. was a what was a typical dinner? Do you remember any of the dinners that your mom used to like to make? Uh, well, Venus, we used to go over to the release station to get powdered milk and powdered uh, eggs and all that. She would send you down there. Oh, and I'd have, we'd have to go down with her. We were oh. not old enough to go by yourself. So we walked down to uh, about a mile away. You get our wagon and fill it up with the uh, government beef and the uh, and the potatoes and the powdered milk and the powdered uh, eggs. What was and all that. what was government government meat? What was that? Uh, I, can't, I can't remember, Steve. I didn't like it. Though. It wasn't spam, was it? Uh, no, because you had, like spam. No, we had spam. Yeah, okay. We had spam. Yeah. What's powdered eggs? Steve, I don't know. I was it know. was it powder or was it? It was just powdered eggs, like you know, you mix milk in it. And you oh, okay, okay. So you're going back so far that I can't remember. I just know that we didn't have the the luxury of having a steak or a, right. Matter of fact, our biggest surprise was when they come out with bouillon soup. And what? We put the bouillon cube in our bowl of water. We thought, my God, we're having chicken. <laughs> 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 or we're having beef. Yeah. What, uh, so, but what do you remember by way of dinners? Do you remember any dinners that your mom used to make, or did she, I remember when we used to eat dinner, she didn't like us drinking milk with our dinner. Remember that? She didn't, she kind of didn't like that, that we'd drink milk at the same time we were eating dinner. You know where that came from? I, I don't know, Steve, except I think they thought the calcium was bad for you. Oh, really? Yeah, at that time, you know. So I what, did she ever make corned beef and cabbage for you? Uh, when we could afford it, yeah. Hmm. Actually, we, we couldn't afford nothing until 1943. And how old were you or then? 1941. So you were born in 19 what? 27. 27, so 30, 40. So about 15, 14, 15 years old? That's when you could start affording things? No, I, I had a paper route in 1937. Okay. And did that income from the paper routes help you guys oh, that, get more helped, food? Uh, because, uh, you know, we had the paper route, we had a morning route, we had an afternoon route. Me and Larry both. You had, so you had did three and paper routes would, a day? Uh, you did three a day? No, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. Oh, okay. And so you had two a day? Did in the morning and the sometimes in the afternoon. And did you, did, was it ever snowing? Was it? Oh, any, yeah. Was, was, oh, did, yeah. Did you ever have to go uphill? No, it was level, but we had to walk in snow and ice and everything else. What time did you have to get up in the morning to do it? Uh, about five. So, what would you... Then we go down and get our papers at the uh, place on 63rd Street, 63rd and Kimberly. So, was this when you were in the apartment? When you were in the apartment where you were just a friend down the street? Uh, no, this was when we were in the apartment. We, we moved a lot as, as kids. How often do, would you say you moved per, uh, per, per five pretty years? Pretty often, because unfortunately my dad had the... Uh, the uh, the uh, um, the uh, fault of drinking. Right. So there's a lot of times we we would step over his body when we come home at night, and we'd have to move out the next day or at night. And Just to get away to get away from him, or yeah, to get away from him. Yeah, he wasn't abusive to us, and he wasn't. I don't ever remember him hitting, hitting my mother, but it was because he had the the. Uh, the habit of drinking, and he would get uh, intoxicated. Actually, Dad wasn't in our life that much. Right. Because there'd be times when he'd be gone for maybe one, two years. So when he came home, though, we always walk with him, and he'd always knock at the door and he'd say to him, Mom, Marie, have you got a cup of coffee? That's what you always say every time? Every time. 
Mary, we got a cup of coffee. What'd she say? She let him in. Say, yes, I got a cup of coffee. But he was so good when he was sober. He used to fix us good meals, you know, like at times when we had the money. What would he make you? Huh? What would he make you? What do you mean? Oh, well, bacon and eggs and stuff like that, you know, pancakes. But that was when we were older. Right. You know, like in, in, in like maybe fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth grade. Right. right. We didn't even come home, you know. Hmm. That's why I wish you had stopped. You, huh? I wish. That's why I wish you hadn't been such a drinker when we were younger. You know. I know, Steve. I couldn't get myself off that stuff. <laughs> so okay, so. Yeah, told me one time. He said, "You know, it takes a man to drink this." He had the bottle of whiskey in his hand. I said, "Yeah, and it takes a man to leave it alone." What would he say? <laughs> he had no answer. <laughs> Was he drunk when he said that a little bit? No, but I used to imitate him a lot when he was drinking. I used to stagger all over the house. Really? Did he laugh? Yeah, he laughed. Did you? Did Grandma laugh? Oh yeah. She, she thought it was funny. But uh, you know, it was just, uh, it was just, uh, you know, it was just a time when Dad was a great guy. He was a great guy when he was sober, but when he wasn't. What was his first name? Charles too. Charles. Charles. Yeah, Charles. So. Charles Evans. And that's who Chuck's been named after. Charles Edmund? Yeah. So so uh, when you get up, when you're living in one of these apartments, and we'd, you'd get up to do the paper. We'd be up at 5 o'clock in the morning. And so, but what was it? Was there a, how was it heated? Was it like a furnace? No, it was like a stove in the middle of the house. A stove and you'd start the fire or what? Yeah, we'd start a fire, yeah. So you guys would get up at 5, start a fire. Yeah, yeah. And then what? Get dressed. Then we got to get our butts out and we get down to the place where we got our papers and we roll them. Was Grandma up by then? Oh yeah, a lot of times, yeah, she would take us down there. She'd walk with you? Yeah, walk with us or I think at one time she had a car and we'd go down there and get in another car. And, but it was, not a, it was not a new car, you know. Right. But uh, we'd go down there and we'd get the papers and we'd roll them all before we left and they'd get them on our wagons. Once, uh, once I had a baby buggy, I got my papers in. And it, just, it was just one of those deals where you delivered the papers in the morning, you delivered them in the afternoon. A lot of times after we would deliver our papers in the morning, we'd go from that over to church to serve Mass. Did you altar boys? Because we were altar boys, yeah. And that's the time, that was at the time when you had to know the Latin. Right. Like Confuter Deo, Tenti, you know, but now it's all in What did you say, Yax Masha No, 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 no. Is that Latin? No. No, that was my dad's. That was my dad's saying. What was that all about? Do you know anything about? I got to find him. I don't. I'm just saying. You actually, want to come another joke. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, so what was some of that Latin again? Confiteor de Omtenti Beata Maria Supper Virgini. It was a confiteor. It was called a confiteor. What does it mean? And uh, well, Steve, you got me going back years and years and years. Yeah. I know. I know. Yeah. Uh, let's see. From from there, I went to. Uh, I had uh, like jobs, like I, my first job was at the uh, at Western Union, 30 cents an hour. Uh, wait, hold on, hold on. Uh, How old were you there? I think I was about 13, 14. Okay, is your dad still alive at this point? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So... He didn't die until nineteen forty. When did you, what grade did you finish in high school? Did you go all the way through high school? No, I went to first year. So 10th grade? 10th grade. And why did you, why did you pull no, out? No, not 10th grade, 9th grade. 9th grade? And yeah. why'd you pull out? Or did you have to go to work? You had to for mom, for grandma? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that what she said? Or was that your choice? That was my choice, yeah. That was mm -hmm. my choice. We, we needed the money. Okay. Yeah. How, well, how did you all co like quit at the same time? Or did Vin no, quit? Larry completed high school. Larry did? Yeah, they completed high school. You both did. They both did. Yeah, yeah. They completed high school. Was that because yeah. things were better then? Or? Yeah, because I think Larry liked school. Well, yeah, things were better then. Yeah. Yeah, things were better, and, uh, and of course, Ben told us it was our responsibility to get him through school and through college if he so desired. To get Larry Which through? Which we didn't do that, huh? To get Larry or Vin? Uh, Vincent, yeah. He oh, said, he thought it was your responsibility? It was our responsibility to put him through school. Oh. Yeah. How do you he, he only went to four years high school. Okay. And then, of course, at that time, we had our restaurant. The 82nd of Racine that we used to take care of the kids in, they'd only come in like between 11 and 2 o'clock. Wait a second. Okay, so... Now, do wait, 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 wait a second. Now, you, you're, you went through nine years of school, 
Did you have any girlfriends in school, or were you not interested at that None point? None of your business. Or were you not interested at that point? None of your business. Come on, talk to me. I was always interested. What was the... <laughs> That's when I met your mother. <laughs> what grade did you meet mom? First year high school. Oh, so you, you only knew her for that one year in school. Actually, I don't think it was a full year, Steve. You don't think it was a full year? No, I don't think it was a full year. Was that unusual for a person to fall out, to drop out, or was that the norm? Mm, uh, I don't know, Steve. I never kept track of the other kids. Did anybody care? Did anybody think it was weird? Well, mom or? cared, but you know. What did she said, say? That's what I want to do. What did she say about it? Then I just said, that's what I want to do. I want to go to work. Help out. How much of your money went to Grandma? All of it. All of it? All, all your, of it. Really? Oh, yeah. And did she give you a percentage of it at all? No. Hmm. I didn't want a percentage. It was all for her. Yeah. But see, now we're going back to, we, we had to go back to like the jobs I had when I was a kid. Yeah. Like the paper routes, the Western Union, the delivering groceries from the market over maybe walking two miles with a bag of, a couple of bags of groceries in my wagon. And that's when you were still going to school. That's when I was still going to school. That's when I was still like 10 or 11 years old. Right. And see, we only did that on Saturday. And Vin, Vin remembers that, because he couldn't do it, but he would be down there with us, and we'd get people coming out of the, the high low store or, or, or whatever, you know, we'd stand there and we'd say, can we help you with your groceries, you know, and we'd load four or five bags into our wagon. Then the people would live maybe half a mile, a mile away, up three flights of stairs, and we'd do that, and then we'd maybe get a dime or 15 cents. And you always gave that to your, to your mom? Yeah, that went to mom, yeah. You never went to the Penny Arcade and spent any of that? Well, yes, one time. <laughs> oh, let's hear about that. No, I told you about that. That's how you knew it. <laughs> Who were you with? Larry. What happened? Uh, well, we, we just had a good day that day. And how much did you have? We stopped at the arcade. I think it was 3 or $4. And uh, we decided to stop at the at the fun land there. No, well, who was the who was the major architect of this plan? Uh, Larry, I think. <laughs> <laughs> of course, he's not here to so, defend himself. No, he's not here. <laughs> but anyway, but anyway, we, we stopped in there and before we knew we had no money left. And on the way home, we thought, what are we going to tell mom? Because she expected the money, right? Well, she expected the money, yeah, to put in the laundry, you know, to take her out the laundry. And uh, So she used that money to pay for cleaning the clothes? Yeah, you know, the washing machine, it costs so much money to put in there, you know. Right. That's where and, uh, of course, uh, we didn't know what to tell her. And finally, it was Larry that came up with the idea, or I came up with the idea, that we would tell her that we were robbed. So what we did was we both stopped and put dirt on our faces and our hands and everything. We walked in and Mom said, where's the money? We said, we got robbed. Do you know what a backhand is? <laughs> No, what? <laughs> it's one of these here. And Lori got it, and I got it at the same time. She, she didn't believe it. She did a double? She did a double. <laughs> so uh, we never did that again. How did Grandma do? get her finger messed up? Got that caught in the ringer of a washing machine. Oh, really? Yeah. When Before you guys were born or after? I don't know when she did it. That's how she told us she did it. Oh, okay. It got caught in the ringer. That's the time when they had the ringer that right. that kind of got the water out of the clothes. Right. It would go like that, you know, and it went through. And mm -hmm. So you, so most of the time you enough, gave the money to... Yeah, that's enough. Money. You want to stop there? That's enough. Money. All right. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Let me see. Let me see it. Go ahead now. All right, here we go, here we go. Now we're not this way. No, it's okay. Don't worry, I won't do it. So the last thing we talked about, basically, was uh, you and Larry uh, taking money, food out of your mom's mouth, basically, by taking your money and going to an arcade. <laughs> and uh, so you're you're about. <laughs> I didn't see that. So we're you're about 12, 13 years old in there. Yes. What was your job? Your first job after. After uh, the paper routes. Western Union. West, how old were you? 14 or 15. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just work through each job. And then we'll come back and get memories from that. But Okay, so you got Western Union. How old were you? 14 or 15? 14 or 15, but I had a work permit. And there weren't any age requirements? 
No, yeah, if I was four, if I wasn't 16, I had to have a work permit. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I, I believe that was at 14. Yeah, I had to have a work permit. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, Western Union. What was that like? I was delivering telegrams. Okay, what what would your what would your day consist of? Eight hours a day. Yeah, but what would you do? What time did they have you in? You were going to school, or no? You quit school at that time, right? No, no, I didn't quit school. No, I was working there like during the summer. Oh, okay. Yeah, so delivering telegrams to to different businesses in the area, and also the downtown in Chicago, which. Of course, I could have made some extra money, perhaps, if I had been able to bring the telegrams up to the people at the hotel, but they took them from us. And then the, then the guy that goes up to the rooms, you know, knocks on the door, telegram from Mr. Jones, and he would tip him. Oh. So I always try, and, try to sneak by those people. I never made it, though. They never let you through? No. no. Hmm. They, had the, they, had, they took the telegrams up to the office. Uh -huh. And how many, so what it, it would be eight hours a day just doing nothing but delivering telegrams? That's right, and sitting on my fanny. How would you get downtown? Did you, have, did you drive or did you take oh, the bus? Or? Take a streetcar. Yeah, it was only seven cents. Oh, okay. To go on the streetcar. Did they pay for the streetcar or did you no, have to? No, we paid for so that. So that was you out of your own pocket? Yeah. How much would you make a week? Uh, about, well, it was about 30 cents an hour. So eight hours a day, so two dollars and forty cents a day, yeah, yeah, yeah. and seven times that is what? Ten, about fifteen dollars a week. Yeah. Yeah, about fifteen a week. Big money. Now, with fifteen bucks a week, you got fifteen bucks in your pocket. Not my pocket. Oh my sure, pocket. I remember the arcade. Don't don't try to tell. Oh me. no, that was one oh, deal. Oh right, right. That was one deal. <laughs> So okay. we learned our lesson after. <laughs> so that money went to mom too. My, that, uh, my, that, my money went to mom up until the day I got married. Really? Yes. I never got anything out of it. Okay. You should bring her the check home every time. If you were to stop into a restaurant, in the pretty nice restaurant, and order uh, a meal with pie and coffee and milk and whatever you wanted, how much would that cost back in then? In those days. Well, I remember we used to uh, order uh, a roast beef sandwich and potatoes and stuff like that. It was 26 cents. 26 cents? 26 cents, yeah. We used to get that once a week. That was our treat for the week. The, the brothers or grandma too? Oh, no, they ate too. Ben, myself. Huh. Not mom because he was usually at work or something like that. Or right. Whatever, you know. right. Yeah. And did they have uh, pie and stuff for dessert and all that stuff? No, we didn't have pie, no. We had wheat and roast beef sandwiches. All right. Yeah. Potatoes and gravy. Okay. Yeah. So how long How long did you work for Western Union? Just that one summer? Uh, yeah, one summer. Yeah. Okay. And then what? And then what? I said, God, see, you're, going back, you're going back to years and years ago. And then I went to work for the Illinois Central Railroad. Illinois Central Railroad? Yeah. Didn't exactly. your dad work for that too? Only one time when he worked with me. He oh, lasted for about six months and then he went off again. Did you get the, get him the job? Yeah, he went down and got on his own. Oh, did he? Okay. Yeah. So what did you do with that job? What did you do? Yeah, I mean, I mailbags. Just packing Taking them? Taking them out of post office trucks and putting them over on, on, on like four-wheel Dollies so that they could bring over to the train. And that paid 70 cents an hour. Oh. Went up. Yeah. So was that a summer job again? Uh, actually, that was a full time job. I worked 3 30 to 12. 3 30 in the morning? No, well, 3 30 in the afternoon to 12 at night. Okay. And then I go to school the next morning. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you'd get out of school and go right to work? Well, See, I'm trying to think now. Uh, when I was working 3.30 to 12, I was like, I was like working, uh, it was more during the, it was actually more when I wasn't going to school. I've had a lot of jobs there, you know, I, know. I think Western Union was, uh, Western Union, the IC Road, Illinois Central Railroad, 
Then from there I went into the service. How old? How old 18, were you? 18. 18. And then, I, then when I came back, I went for went back to the railroad. And then I had a job with Standard Oil of Indiana, and I worked there for about two years. After that, we got a. Uh, I went to work for the airlines, Transworld Airlines. Finn worked there as well. He was a baggage handler. I was a guy that used to fuel the planes. Okay. And we just pulled a gasoline truck underneath the wing, and then we had to put the ladder up and then go over and fill the, the inboard tank and then the outboard, or the middle one, then the outboard. And that, was in, that was at the Midway Airport in Chicago where it was always cold. Yeah. And the wintertime was like 20 below zero, and nothing to block the wind. Yeah. Then I went into being a passenger agent, which I took a decline in pay. <laughs> well, you were selling tickets? I was selling tickets at the counter, which Vince said was the best thing in the world for me. <laughs> <laughs> After I was at it for a while, I went back to fueling the plane. Why? Just not enough pay? No, I didn't, yeah, not enough pay. I wasn't getting any overtime in. Oh, okay. I said, Thank you, Vin. <laughs> Vin probably picked up your overtime. <laughs> no, he was in the baggage department. Yeah. And he used to work 24 hours around the clock sometimes, which I did as well. Yeah. But when he, when, when he when he went but when he came back without an eight-hour break, he went into town half right off the bat. Mm. I never we got that privilege. Why did he? Because he got went back before the eight-hour break was up. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he started right at time and a half again. Mm. Yeah, he made some he made some good money, but I made some good money too, even though I didn't get the time and a half he got. Right. So but you the went thing from about, but the thing about working the the airlines was that was that the you you started. I used to work three thirty to twelve, because of the weather. A lot of guys wouldn't show up for work, so you had to work overtime. And then the day shift wouldn't show up. Then you'd have to work the day shift, then your own shift. And I say, I'm going home. Yeah. So it was like it was like twenty four hours. You know. This is good money. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and then I usually rode, rode to work together. Although if we had, if we couldn't, we always take a streetcar to work, you know, because yeah. they went right by the airport. But then let's see, then what did I do after that? No. Oh. And then after the. What? Oh, yeah. But but. You can talk. It's all right. Are you taping? Yeah. Oh. Uh, start sandwiches. This yeah. is time. Is it time? Are you hungry? No. No. Well, it's it's twenty till, so maybe you should wait till like five. What time is it now? You just told me to put the noodles in, so I did. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, do that. Then wait till five for the uh, sale. Okay. We'll eat about five, five fifteen. Is that good? Yes. Yeah, sit with me. Let me fix my hair. Oh, get over there. Sit with me. No, this is my sister's way. Go ahead. So, what did you think of uh, Anne when you first met her? Oh man, up in the air. <laughs> she was up. Uh, she was up in the air. No, I said I was up in oh. the air. <laughs> Now let's get back to my husband and get out of here. Okay. <laughs> Can you have them turn the TV down a little bit? Um, now where are we at now? Okay, so after the after you w were working at the airport, then what job? Oh. Well, after the airport, but that's when we moved out to California. Okay. So matter of fact, matter of fact, I was going to be transferred out here with Transfer Airlines to the LA airport, but. About a month prior to that, some guy got fired for not being late all the time. Late all the time, and we didn't realize this until it was too late. That this guy had done the same thing in another airline, and we were all backing him. Oh. So we all went on a strike. So about a week before he, about the time they called us back in to make out new employment applications, mm -hmm. I had already. We had already closed the restaurant, and we were going to move out to California. What restaurant? So the restaurant we had in Chicago. Okay, we, had we'll a, get, we had a restaurant in Chicago as well as working for the airlines. We'll get back to that. Yeah. So you came out to California. Yeah, but we had this restaurant going at the same time we were working for the airport. All right. Now, what was whose restaurant was it? It was ours. It was ours. Who? Who? It was Mom and Larry, Mom and Ben and mine. And not. Uh, we got that from mom because when Jack moved out to California, mother was very depressed. Oh, we right. had to get something to keep her busy because she was crying all the time because Jack moved out here with, with, with uh, uh, Lynn Carroll and, Patri and Patty and I think uh, 
I think the next one to come along was uh, Jackie, I think. And, so uh, Lynn, or Jack married Aunt Eileen. No. And, and, and Lynn had Carol. Lynn Carroll, Jackie, and Joanne. And Joanne and Bernadette, they're all. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. And, but he moved out, and your mom didn't want him to leave? No, no. Actually, what brought it up was. I had to go back in the story, Steve. I had to okay. go back, okay? okay. Because uh, when when we were after I got out of the service, I was able to get the GI loan for a house, and Jack had the same thing. Although he wasn't in very long because he had uh, stomach ulcers or something. Okay, so we bought this three flat house on the south side of Chicago. A three flat house? Yeah, three stories. Oh, okay. We lived in the basement apartment. He lived on the second floor. Hmm. But that's all right because we could rent out the third floor on the first floor. Okay. But there was some conflict there because uh, when when we put Larry on the house as well, because a lot of his money went towards the house as well, you know. Yeah. And Jack kind of resented that. Well, but, if Larry put money towards it, of what course is he it? did. Yeah, but Jack yeah. Jack kind of didn't like that, you know. Oh. So anyway, we had a little bit of a conflict there. And that was just about the time I was 21, or maybe a little bit older. But anyway, it was at the time that I never knew that we were half-brothers and not brothers. Right. And that's from the first guy that got kicked in the head with a horse. That's right. That's, that was his dad. Yeah. And they, what happened was we didn't know that until Mom said I was a, 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 a wife and a mother and a widow within a year's time because she got married to this other guy, uh, whose name was uh, McAvoy. McAvoy. And of course, when Dad got married to my mother, he adopted Jack. Jack uh, how Jack. old was Jack? Huh? Do you know how old Jack was? At that time, I don't know, Steve. Mm -hmm. I don't know. He was seven years old. But uh, anyway, so anyway, that flying conflict was one of the reasons that Jack moved out and. Then, and we, we said, let's just walk away from this. From the house? From the house, because we didn't want this kind of trouble. And, uh, you know, it wasn't, money wasn't a big thing. It was, but, you know, we weren't going to let that cause problems. Anyway, uh, so, then Jack, so then Jack moved out to California, and then we bought the restaurant because Mom was so depressed. And how much, and I, now, you guys must have been doing all right to be able to buy a restaurant just like... Just to just to make your depressed oh, mom feel better. It wasn't, wasn't that much. It wasn't that much. We didn't buy it. We rented it. Oh, okay. Yeah, we rented it. Yeah. And, uh, and what did what did you what kind of food did you have? Yeah, hamburgers and hot dogs, French fries, stuff like that. Ice cream. We eat our own ice cream. Did you make money off it? Uh, not a whole lot because we we just took care of the kids from Cayman High School. They come in there at noon time and then that would be it. Oh. And we did try and steal them one night, and then some guy hit some guy, and one night one of the kids with the with the brass knuckles, and that was the end of our night night nighttime stuff. So what was your hours? Uh, about eleven to two, or ten oh. to two. Really? Yeah. And did you live above it? No, we lived in the back of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, we lived in the back of it. So it was kind of your house, but you yeah, it was a house as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah. So, so anyway, then Jack moved out to California, and we got the restroom for mom. And he kept us so busy, he had time to think about Jack, you know. Which is what you wanted. Yeah, which is what we wanted, yeah. yeah. Then we finally decided to move out here in 1952. And that's about the time I left the airlines, too. It was in 1952. Didn't you guys have a bar, too? Huh? Didn't you own a bar, too? Oh, no, I owned, I, no, I, I, me and another guy owned a bar in 12th and Central in Los Angeles, but. That's later. That was much later. Yeah. Okay. We, we didn't do well in that. Okay. And then, uh, and then, uh, so prior to that, then I didn't uh, stop to think for a minute because I can't think right now. Mm. Uh, so anyway, then we, so then we came out here. I got a job at Bill Bowman's gas station. Bill Bowman's gas station. At Montreal and Harvard oh, Avenue. Oh, it's um, oh, no, that was, uh, then, then Vin and I tried to sell cars for uh, for the ramp for the uh, 
for the Metropolitan little small car. So you got uh, you got a job at Bill Bowman's, then you went into trying to sell cars. Actually, I think Bill Bowman I worked for before when I made my first trip out here, and I stayed for a while. I worked for him. Oh, okay. And then when I came back, then Vin and I tried to get a job selling cars. And of course, we had no experience. And we said to the guy, "Look, if you don't let us sell cars, how are we ever going to get experience? Yeah. You know, so give us a chance." But so he didn't want to sell. He didn't want to. He didn't want to hire us, but. Uh, actually, I got a lot of people interested in the cars, but I could never make the sale. I always had a T.O. to sale. Why? Well, because I didn't want to take advantage of people. <laughs> you didn't want to what? Take advantage of people. Get them out of a car they already paid for and put them under a lot of debt. Oh. In other words, I, I couldn't complete the sale. Yeah. So I T.O. over to another guy that could finish it. Did you get any money out of that? A, l a little commission. Not yeah. the whole thing, but a little bit. Yeah. yeah. You know, let's see then what they do. Yeah. What did you do after that? Oh, then I went to work for the post office, yeah. Okay. Post yeah, I went office. to work for the post office. And uh, I was at the post office about three or four years. Worked in Montrose and ended up in La Cunada. And then I started my own patrol service. Wait a second, post office? What did you do there? Were you like a postman? You delivered I letters? I delivered mail, I delivered mail, yes. Did you wear those socks that go up to your knees? Pardon? Did you wear like the black socks that go all the way up to your knees? What black socks? Oh, what were you wearing? Were you wearing the gray? pants. You didn't have a uniform? No. Oh, okay. I was a substitute. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so then you'd go, uh, then you worked for your, what was that other thing, a security? Yeah, my own, my own patrol service. And how'd you get it, that it, started? It, 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 Macaulay's Protective Association. <laughs> <laughs> how'd you get that started? I took, I, I uh, Went and took a license for it and passed it, <coughs> you know. And uh, but there was another guy who'd been down in Lacanya a lot sooner than me. So of course he had a lot of people, and uh, you know. And I had to go out and find to get my own, like along just cancel drive near just cancel guards, you know. Right. And go by and I'd shine the flashlight in the house, and if I saw anything suspicious, I'd go up there with my gun in my hand. Which I got from Jack because he had the weapon when he was on the police force. So he gave you the gun? 38, 38, uh, 38 revolver. And uh, well, of course, half the time I forgot to put bullets in it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a bullet in your pocket like Barney? <laughs> <laughs> no, no bullets at all. <laughs> so anyway, I go by and I take, uh, it was like, I think it was like $10 a month or $12 a month. But then I also had stores along the foot of the boulevard, which I would check. And I can't tell you how many times I find Dr. Loopy's office open at night. Dr. Loopy? The one that gave me my operation for my for pinonidal cysts. For your what? Pinonidal cysts. It was on the chub on. Pinonidal cyst? Yeah, pine, yeah, you get it from your mother. Oh. Yeah, so uh, uh, that's about it right now. i got to go to the bathroom. Well, wait, tell me about, you said you found his, his, uh, his door open a lot? Yeah, you know, it was, <laughs> we got the lock it. Oh, okay. I go in, I have my flashlight and make sure no one was in there, and then I just close the door and leave. All right. Yeah. And go ahead. That, that's enough for now. No, no, you just said something. I got to go to the bathroom. You said, that was, that, the bathroom. You said that was also the I time. I got to go to the bathroom. You said that was the time that you... I got to go to the bathroom. Back with your movie. <laughs> my goodness. What's going on in here? Not too much. Coming out. Yeah. You feel better? Yeah, feel better than I did a week ago. Everybody, can everybody, everything come out all right? Huh? Did everything come out all right? Just not much of the best. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, Steve, we gotta go back and uh, we gotta go back now. <laughs> We're forgetting somebody very important. What's that? My wife. Well, I know, but I wanted to go through the jobs, but let's hit the wife. Oh, the jobs, okay. No, it's okay. Let's go back to the wife. When did you first meet Mom? In high school. What did you think when you first saw her? She was beautiful. They said, would you like to kiss that girl there? I said, I don't want to kiss that one there. Who asked you that? Some of the guys. <laughs> <laughs> I said, that one there with the beautiful teeth. And uh, they kissed her on the second date. And, oh, you uh, got the second, first base on the on the second day. I was 16, she was 14. That's Excuse why me? I, that's not why when I asked Lauren if them neck and they said, no, we don't do that. 
Well, don't give me that. I was making with your grandma. <laughs> he was 14. <laughs> anyway, so anyway, yeah, I met her in high school. And, uh, of course, she ended up marrying James, Jim Dunahue. Well, wait, did you date anything before oh, that? Oh, yeah, we did, yeah. Matter of fact, I first... The first best meal I ever had in my life was at her house. It was like a lamb. Oh yeah, because they were rich. Never had like a lamb. Well, her dad worked, had a, uh, worked for the uh, for the Stark Piano Company, I think. And uh, of course, so that was my best meal, like a lamb. Oh, my God, never heard of like a lamb before in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Said that's the girl for me. Yeah, well, right there. <laughs> yeah, but anyway. Uh, so how how long did you guys date before you broke up? Uh, actually, uh, yeah, I came back from the service. I came back on a furlough, I think, and I said, uh, she said, are you coming over? And I said, no, I said, I'm going dancing. She said, who with I said, Eileen. And it, <laughs> that was it. Oh, she was mad? She was mad, yeah. yeah. Who's so, Eileen? My, my, I think Jack's wife. Oh, so she wanted you to come over and see her first. Yeah, right, yeah. So, so anyway, but then she married, uh, so then uh, she married Jim Stine, Jim Denny, who uh, and I, I knew too, you know, from, from Beverly because he used to go over to the Dunny house all the time. Or Joy Dunny, you met her. Yeah. Yeah. And Pat Dunny, you. How did you and feel? Pat. How did you feel about that when she got married? Oh, I think I didn't care. Because hmm. you uh, hadn't seen she, her in a long time. No, no, she 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 loved Jim, and uh, she loved him since she was a, a uh, like a teenager. Uh. Of course, she was in the Navy, and he came back, and he was a he had a lot of medals. He was a very heroic guy. I understand one of the ships that he was on was a, a ship that caught fire, and if it hadn't been that he was kind of on the slim side, a lot of the guys he saved were down below that he was able to get into the compartment to save them. Oh. And, uh, but of course, unfortunately, like a lot of good people, they have that, that fear of being a drinker. Yeah. And of course, he was a commercial artist, made good money. And, uh, <clears throat> was that mom on the ivory? So well, that's what he was working on. That's, oh. what he was, that's what he was working on, yeah. Oh. So she never actually got on there? No, no, but that's what he was doing. You oh. know? And uh, I don't know if you ever see Scotty again and ask for some of the Paintings that that Jim sent to Bev. Yeah, they were really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, did you ever seen them before? Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, did you? Yeah. yeah. And uh, anyway, uh, so then Jim died uh, because he was in an accident. And then then your then your mother came out here in fifty. I think it was November of fifty five. I think. I might be wrong on my dates, but I think it was November of '55. It came up for Thanksgiving. So just seven short years away from your biggest blessing in your life. Huh? So it's seven more years, and you have the biggest blessing of your life. Who is that? Me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. So anyway. Uh, <laughs> so anyway. Uh, uh, so why'd she move out here? Well, actually, she was she was a widow at that time. Yeah. And Mom was back there for Butch Kelly's wedding, and Bev was at the wedding. I think Bev invited her to the. I think Mom invited her to the wedding, and she went there with the, herself and the four children. And at that time, she said, "Beverly, why don't you come out?" Because she knew Beverly was very depressed and, you know, crying all the time. And she said, "Why don't you come out to California?" and spent Thanksgiving with us, you know. And of course, then we ended up getting married, you know. Well, did Mom have any family in Chicago? Yeah, uh, Isabel. No, not your mom. Yeah. My my mom. Oh, yeah, sure, she just tell you had uh, the Donahue family was there. No, I mean on her side. On her side? Yeah, yeah, Miss Clare was still there. Mrs. Clare? Yeah, her mother. Matter of father, father died. How old was her? I mean, it seems kind of weird just for me to think about mom just up and leaving with four kids and leaving everybody behind. Oh yeah, but her mother moved out here shortly after that. Mrs. Clark did. Yeah, Mrs. Clark did. Oh okay. Yeah. yeah. So uh, anyway, uh, what was Miss? What was Mrs. Clark like? 
She was very nice when she was sober. Oh, she was a drinker too. Yeah, huh? she was a drinker too. Yeah. Did she drink her fact, entire I remember, life? I remember the first time that I went over to Drift's house when her mother was drinking, and she said, "I can't, I can't let you in." Oh. And she told me at that time. Yeah. So I said, "Well, I understand because my dad was a drinker too." Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, but anyway. what was what? Did she drink her entire life until she died, or? Oh yeah, there'd be times when the kids were staying with her. And, and Patty would call us and say, I think Grandma's been drinking because if she'd be on the couch and she'd be wet in the couch, you know? Oh, really? <laughs> so Ben would have to go down and get him, you know. From work or where? For who? From when work? Mom was yeah. at work? I don't know where she was, I see. Mm. But they would tell me that the, the Grandma was drinking, you know? Yeah. So. yeah. Anyway. Uh, but she was nice? Huh? What, what no, she was, she was nice when she was sober. Oh, yeah, she loved me. I liked her too, you know, yeah, yeah. and uh, I remember uh, being in a school play one year where they threw me up on the table and I threw off, I fell off. I was supposed to be sick or something and they threw me off the, threw me on the table and I went on, went on the other side. <laughs> and uh, she, laughed, she laughed about that, she was funny. So anyway, then, then let's see, so then we got married and then we had, uh, we got married in 50, 56 I think. So just six because short years. Because was born in 57, I think. So we were born in 56. But it was shortly after that that we got married, but the mom never invited anybody out from, uh, out from Chicago again. Why was that? <laughs> Why do you think? <laughs> so uh, anyway, but you know, she, she, always, she always said that. She said, yeah. I never invited many out of you. <laughs> no, I'd say that. She never invited anybody out after that. Because <laughs> it was kind of a joke. Yeah. Know? What uh, what was your first impression of the kids and everything? Was it hard getting in, you know, stepping in? They called me there right away. Really? Yeah, they called me there right away. And as a matter of fact, Pat, Patty thought it was her, her dad. He couldn't be because actually, Jim and I kind of looked alike. We had the same complexion. Right yeah. yeah. You know, she she didn't think her dad died. Yeah. So anyway, uh, well, I think Carol was six, and Patty was five, and. Terry was three, and I think Jim was, uh, no, Jim was three, and I think Terry was about two years old, or a year and a half, something like that. Yeah. But, huh. uh, but we, they, they bought a, a place, in, they rented a place down in Montrose. <clears throat> then we got married and we moved up into La Crescenta on, on Pickwood Avenue. And then, uh, and that was at the time that I had the, that I had the protective agency, plus working for the post office. He had two jobs. I going. had the two jobs, yeah. But after a while, when we got so that I was working so late at night, that I'd be delivering the mail the next day, and I'd be in my truck, and I'd have my hand in the mailbox. And I drove off, and the guy tapped me on the shoulder, and said, can I have my mail now? <laughs> <laughs> so finally so I had to give it up, because yeah. I couldn't do the bulge. Yeah. Yeah. So I gave up the post office. So the, because the other one paid better? Well, it wasn't a pay better because I was just substitute. I, I think it was two fifty an hour at that time. Oh, yeah. you know, and of course when I got when I when I had to make the decision whether I was going to stay at the post office or find a job that would pay better, I asked this guy what he made as a regular postman. He told me, and I said, "Well, I can't, I can't stay at this job. I got to get something else." Yeah. So then I went to Space Technology Laboratories. Space Technology Laboratory? What did yeah, you do there? I also got known aviation. What did you do there? Uh, I started out as a, uh, as a uh, guy that would drive people from the place in Inglewood to the place in El Segundo, back and forth. Back and forth. It was a good job, paid good money. Why got couldn't them, they drive of, themselves? Huh? Why couldn't they drive themselves? Well, because we were there for that purpose. Oh, okay. It was, it was, it was an outside company that had the, had the the cars. Right. They were getting so much from Space Technology Laboratories for being there. So I would be driving back and forth, and uh, so then I finally made out an application, went in and told them. I said, you know, I said, I'd rather you know get a job here and do the driving. Yeah. So I was got a job doing that, man. I was all over the city, picking up this and picking up that. And, Good money. Then I left that to go help Larry, who had started the trucking business, because Larry didn't know anything about driving trucks. Why did he start the trucking business then? 
I, I don't know. Well, he was going to hire somebody to drive the truck. Right. But I thought as a brother I'd go in and help him. But that didn't turn out too good, so. So, did Larry. What are you looking at? <laughs> so, Larry went to school. He went through college, right? No. He went to, he went to, uh, to be a stenographer. You know, oh, like, okay. Uh, Shortly He mm -hmm. did a good job at the railroad. Yeah. And of course, unfortunately, he had to have it or two. You yeah. know? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the Irish. And Jack. It runs in the blood. And what? Jack. But he, he, he <coughs> got on, but Jack, he got on the, uh, 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 uh Anonymous? Yeah, he yeah. got on that. He didn't drink anymore. Yeah. So after the uh, driving for the aviation technology, then what? I drove the truck. And then what did you do? Uh, well, then I worked for the for the uh, milk company, delivering milk in the morning. You were a milkman? I was a milkman. I never knew my dad was a milkman. Yeah. I was did a you wear the white suit? Uh, yeah, but I wasn't very good as a milkman because I was <laughs> always late. Oh. I was always late, but. Uh, I remember going through the one apartment complex there. And had a pool and the water was slippery, and I went in and boom, all the milk went up in the air. It was glass bottles, right? Glass bottles. Yeah. <laughs> then I saw Fuller Brush. Did you feel guilty about Fuller selling? Fuller Brush, man. Fuller Brush. Did you feel guilty about selling that to people? What? The, Fuller Brush. Yeah, because no, you felt guilty. That was a good product. Oh, okay. It's a good product. First, my first customer that bought a lot was uh, was Mickey Rooney's first wife. Oh, really? What was her yeah, name? Yeah, she lived in Glendale. I can't remember now. Uh, so you're going back 40 years. Uh, yeah. And, uh, but I had to wait for a check from her, from his, from the accountant. But it was Mickey Rooney's first wife. Now, what did, what it was the sell pitch? What, what do Fuller Brushes do? Oh, God, Steve, Fuller Brushes have been around for years. What is it? I don't even know what it is. And tell Steve what Fuller Brushes are. What? Tell Steve what Fuller Brushes are. Brush fuller brushes are the best brushes around. They had a lot of products. Is it hair brushes? Fact, no, no, everything. Hair brushes, uh, cosmetics, everything. Oh, for like eyeliner and stuff? Uh, everything, yeah, but there was other stuff as well. It yeah. wasn't just yeah. eyeliners. Yeah. But, you know, I said, Bev, I said, do you, do you buy a lot of fuller brush brushes? She said, look underneath the sink. There's a lot of products there. I've never heard brush. of it. Huh? I've never heard of it. You never heard of fuller brush? No. <laughs> and what would you do when you knock on the door? What would you say? i say hello. You would say, Fuller Brush Man. Fuller Brush Man. And a lot of people would say, come on in. But it was all, if you knocked on so many, if you knocked on so many doors, you could make a sale. But I didn't like going out in the evening. Why? Because I want to be with my family. Oh, okay. And that's when I went to, driving, to the driving school, working for California Driving School. And then you started your own business. I started my own driving school, that's right. And was the next step after A to Z driving school, was the next step uh, the bus? Gray Line? That's right. Gray that's Line? Right. That's right. So that was the last job. That's right. That was back in 1969 or 70, I think. Yeah. So just eight years after. But I had one guy working for me one time who was a deputy. And uh, Working for you? Yeah, working for me, yeah. Doing what? Part-time job, teach people how to drive. Oh, because you had employees? I had two of them, yeah. Oh, but, I didn't know but, that. But it got real slow. Oh. And that's when I went down and put an application in with Green Eye because I had worked for them prior to that for about six months, but I had a rear-end collision they fired me. <laughs> <laughs> so I went back, and uh, Bob Truex, who's a good friend of mine right now that's pretty close to not being around much longer, uh, did you see that catalog book that I, that I had, the, uh, the drivers and all that over there? Yeah, years? yeah, you showed me. Well, he's the one that gave me that book because he don't know how long he's going to live, so he says, Chuck, I want you to have this, you know? Right. So I said, okay. So uh, I went out with him and he passed me. And of course, after that, it was all right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Cool. God, I don't know if I covered everything, Steve, because, of, you know, so much of a lifetime. Oh, you know? I know. Well, we'll get it. So much of a lifetime. Yeah. All right, so we'll call it quits. You want to go give Pops a kiss on tape? A what? Oh. What? Don't, don't kiss my mustache here, folks. What? Yeah, we won't show the mustache. Don't worry. Mm. What do I do?
Let me kiss on tape. <laughs> oh. Go give him a kiss on tape, Dad. That mustache is all messed up there, Daddy. Oh. Go give him a kiss on tape. How did it turn out? Turned that good. Mm -hmm. right, here we are again. Yeah, yeah, good. Um, when did you first find out that uh, mom's first husband got killed? My mother's first husband? My mom's first husband. You know, Jim down here, or was it Jim? Oh, yeah, Jim, Jim, Jim yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Jim died on August the 28th of 1956, I believe. And, uh, of course, I left that widowed. And then, uh, Mama went back to a wedding, and at that time she went to come out to California. Okay. And because Beverly needed to go away to Chicago. Why? Well, because she was, you know, in a state where she thought she should get away for a while. Okay. <laughs> so she went to California, and uh, she went to a place down in the Montrose. And of course, I started seeing her down there. But she actually, she came off of Thanksgiving of 1956. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, 1956. And uh, and uh, she stayed with us for almost a month. And it was uh, after that we started going together because we went together in high school. And uh, of course, at that time, I never asked anybody out again. And, uh, she never asked, oh, okay, right. Uh, no, she never asked anyone out again. She made one mistake, she wanted to get another one. So anyway, uh, I was told that the best you got to kick out. So anyway, uh, then, uh, of course, uh, everything went on. You're watching when I'm all through it, do you? So anyway, I've had the four kids, Carol, and Patty, and Jim. And and uh, Cherry, and yeah. uh, uh, we, we ended up getting married in uh, April of 57, I think. And the, the priest at that time thought it was a good idea because the kids needed some supervision. So we got married uh, when Jim hadn't been, even been dead a, a year, but there was no love between Bob and Jim at the time he died because of the way he was, he drank and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. you know, with, I liked him. He's a nice guy. You know, I really knew him as a as a man. Never knew him as a husband. You know, but uh, so anyway, then we got married, and of course. Uh, so how long? Did, how long had you known the kids? Oh, well, I'd seen the kids over the years. Okay. Even when they lived in Chicago, I got to the house and took them. And yeah. How did how did that go? That transition go? Was that hard? What transition? You know, from from having one dad. To having another dad. For the kids? Yeah. They didn't, they, they thought I was Jim. <laughs> they thought I was Jim because I always looked like him, you know, at the time. And uh, Patty said, no, you're my dad. You know, I said, no, I'm not. <laughs> but all the kids except for me really got thanks to Carol because he started going to be there right away. The other kids were right in line, you know. And uh, How old was Carol at that time, do you know? Carol was six, I think. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I think she was six. And uh, two years we got closer and closer. And uh, all the kids they really I love a lot. Carol and Patty and uh, Jim, of course, John now. And Cherry, Ross, and, uh, and then the mistake I made, Steve. And then, <laughs> and then no, the truck and then Steve, that was a mistake, yeah. But no, all the kids have really been Looking after me ever since I've gotten sick, where they were always, always saw me before that time, you know. Yeah. But since I've been sick now, thank goodness I've got uh, Patty there, and uh, she's taking me here and taking me there, and Ralph has been there for me. And Cherry, Cherry's pretty busy with school and stuff like that, and uh, but I knew she had the time she would pick me up with Kaiser or whatever. Whenever I went down to Kaiser and over the past two or three, three or four months, they're all there with me, you know. When I'm in the emergency room or in my room or whatever. 
So, uh, uh, I, I think what I want to say most is that, uh, you know, the, the life that I lived as a kid, of course, was hard, but every kid had that life because of the change, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'd also like to say that there were times when I wasn't such a good kid myself. I made mistakes in my lifetime, and, uh, and I wasn't too happy with the way I was doing it sometimes. I remember one time I was missing mass for almost two years because, uh, because I didn't have money to tell him to go to mass, so I was in the service of the thing I ever went to mass. Because I didn't have anything to kick my butt. Yeah, so. Uh, she was good at kicking your butt. Oh, yeah, she was, yeah. yeah. I remember the first retreat I went on. She said, You went to that retreat. She almost kicked my butt over 87th Street to the church <laughs> to go to that retreat, and I'm going to do it because I needed it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, to make a long story short, uh, you know, I just want to, to want ever, all the kids to know that I made mistakes in my life that I was sorry for. There were a lot of times God uh, put his blessings upon me and I didn't take them because there was a lot of times I took them. But uh, you can't go back over your mistakes that you made, you know. And, uh, but uh, I'm sure uh, Jesus will, will uh, for you guys forgive me for those things, you know. Yeah. So anyway, I just uh, I feel a lot better now. Like, you know, you can't really, I think you really do when you're raising kids with such examples. And of course, uh, I know that Carol and, uh, and uh, Georgia both own a church. I'm raising her kids uh, Catholic. And I think Ch Chuck is, I'm not sure. I know Miles, uh you know, I, I, I just wish that Ross and, and Terry and Patty, although they're wonderful kids, I can't understand why they can't take a, an hour out of their week to, praise, to, to, to go to church, you know, and, uh, and stuff like that. But whether they're busy or not, everybody, everybody's got some time to get the Lord, you know. Yeah. Uh, I know I'm only going to Mass every Sunday. And, uh, which is what I try and do. To read your Bible a lot, too. I read my Bible a lot now, yes. Uh, Steve's bugging me. Uh, Steve, of course, Steve did turn a Baptist, but I still think he's a wonderful person, a wonderful son, a wonderful father, a wonderful husband. And, uh, but I just feel like even though Mary House is married a second time, she can do the church, she can do the church, you know. Yeah. And uh, Patty, too, she gets to go to church. And she was doing that for a while, but I don't think he's coming for quite a while now. Then first she used to go with Lauren and Alice. But uh, now they don't seem to be going, I don't know why. But I know uh, that when Mav and I were married, that, that we had, she's in our, in our marriage, if, if, if he hadn't been there, I think we would have up after a couple of years. Yeah. Because we were having our differences too about how to raise the kids. And uh, every time I correct Terry or Patty, I get a dirty look from Beth. And I wasn't going to put up with this. She went to a retreat and explained to the priest what was happening. He said, Look, you married him to help you raise your children. Go along with these sons. Yeah. That was that, see. But uh, other than that, I think. Hold on. What happened? Oh. There's a spider on your hat. A spider? <laughs> God. Anyway, uh, so what? It, what if you could say anything in terms of belief in God, and the first place to start for the for the people you mentioned, what would you say they need to do? What would you want them to do? Well, I think they could really have their first marriages to know and and go into the back into the Catholic faith. Just go down and talk to your priest and say, yes, I'd like to go back. Well, do you think that's what's holding them back, though? I don't know what's holding them back. You know, it's, uh, uh, I know I talked to a priest some time back. He said, hey, I'm going to talk to this. Maybe we get an element. You know, but this is what I don't understand, Steve. Is that I know Jesus gave his life for us, you know, but is. They're also going to be looked upon as a person who didn't believe. 
of Patty because they married a second time. Oh, yeah. You know. Um, but, uh, so when you first started raising the kids, you said that one of the troubles was that you and Mom didn't agree or about raising, like, what What yeah. did she want? Like, when you did you spank and she didn't like spanking or what? Uh, she didn't like spanking, she didn't like discipline. Really, I think Jim used to be very disciplinary. The first oh, yeah. And I don't think she wanted to just retreat that way again, but it was only because, you know, like, when I married her, the kids were still using spoons to eat with. They were using spoons to eat with? Yeah. Okay. So I started using a knife and a, a fork, you know. And, of course, if she used to say anything to Jim about that, or he saw us at home, he'd, he'd beat the kids. No. He just put them and I used them, so. No. I don't know exactly what was happening, but she really do not you know, Just, uh, when he was drinking, he was pretty tough on me, you know, so. Okay. Yeah. And so the, um, so the first few couple of years were kind of rough? Yeah, there were times we went to two or three retreats. Okay. Yeah, you know, and faced with some other differences and stuff like that, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. What uh, What were your What are some of your best memories from the first five years? We well, had a lot of fun. Like what? Oh gosh, you're making a dizzy man is going to the up to the um, <coughs> up to the uh, just Crest Highway. Santa's so Village. Campground up there. Santa Claus's Village. Yeah, that was up in Mammoth. They were in the Big Bear. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. He's had a lot of fun doing that. He's going to try to take him up for every Christmas. But he was getting everything ready down below. How long were you at the Willow Lee house before you moved to, yeah. you know, the Locker Center house, before you moved to uh, Genoa? Um, I think we had eight or nine years ago. I'm not sure. We moved here when you were about three years old. Yeah. Yeah. What, uh, what, why'd you guys move? Because, uh, I had that driving school, I had that uh, work for Colorado Driving School at the time. Mm -hmm. And there was more money out there than there was in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. So that's where I went out there. And how much did you pay for that house? Uh, I think 23000 23000 Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Um, As you think back to the uh, to the teen years of your of the kids, I don't want to talk about the teen years. <laughs> I don't blame you. No. Um, what was Carol like? Carol was very good. She was very good. She went to the Navy. No, teen years before okay, that. Years, what was she like years. around the house? What was her yeah, personality good. like? She was good. Her personality was good. A lot of kids were good around the house. Yeah. Yeah. Did she did she hit anybody? She what? Did she ever hit or do anything that got her in trouble? She wasn't there. No? No. What about uh, Jim? Jim was uh, a typical boy. Yeah, just like Chuck and you and when you were a kid, he used to pick on you, just like Miles used to pick on you. You know, which I've, uh, I've, I've told him about that wasn't right. Yeah. But he said, yeah, we do that. We want to do it anyway. <laughs> And what about Patty? What was Patty like? Patty was the same, quiet. She was quiet? She was, Patty was on the quiet side. Cher was, uh, Cher was uh, absolutely quiet. She was bubbly all the time, you know. So they both, uh, they all held jobs as uh, teenagers. Ross, of course, started to recall his junior when he was about 15 or 16, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, that's why I said, you know, it's, it's, it's too hard to go back. Oh, I know, I know. It's too hard to go back. Well, that, I, what I want, what I'll do is just bring you to places. If you remember, you remember. If you don't, you don't. No, I can't. So, but, but you remember uh, any time of any any one of us, particularly the older four, of ever getting in trouble, really bad trouble for doing something? Yeah. Like what? Like, uh, get arrested. To the gym? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, uh, I remember I uh, went out to, uh, what is it, how was it? Uh, 
San Juan Capistrano or something. Was, anyway, it's behind the Roman in San Diego. And I uh, went out there to, to a trial, and of course the cop said, why didn't you run? I would have liked to have shot you. And they were just looking at cars at night. Yeah. The night before, they were looking at cars, and I guess they thought they were going to steal one. Oh. So there's four of them, or five of them. And I brought you home with me, and uh, you know, it's just uh, one of those things. What about uh, Carol? Carol ever get in trouble or come home drunk or anything? No, no. Carol just uh, took my car one night for a drive and got hit on the boulevard. Well, how old was she? I uh, think she uh, was 16. She wanted to see if she could drive. I said, who told you you could drive? Matter of fact, when the cops knocked on the door, it was 3 in the morning. Oh, really? Yeah. Did ever get your daughter in the car? I said, no, you don't. She said, it's not bad. <laughs> what was Carol? How was Carol acting? Hold on. But was she crying? How was she acting? Yeah, she was crying. She was sorry, you know. She had done it a couple of times other than that. Oh. But we didn't know about it. Was she driving at 3 in the morning? Yeah. Yeah. I played on Boulevard. She just snuck out of the She got hit by a car doing it. Oh. Yeah. And the one that went and fucking on the car and there were two of us. And I don't know how it ended up. It was just too many years ago. You know? Did she get grounded? I should go around and go on. Benny got grounded. How did he? Benny got grounded for going to the beach. He uh, played hooky. He played hooky? What, played she, hooky what, yeah. what did she do? She went to the beach. Oh. She went to the summer. I thought you could have your school. Well, I don't think I went to go to the beach. She got a burn? She got burned? Oh, you got burned. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. What about Terry? Terry, uh. Yeah, sure. I don't remember her being in trouble. And, uh, and then there was, uh, who was the other one? Jim. Oh, Jim, yeah, he got, he got trouble. Yeah. Yeah, quite a few times, but, but he turned out to be a great son. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah he was at lots of uh, university studios, and, and he was loved by everybody. And you can tell that from the friend because all his friends came, yeah. you know, from the studio. Yeah. Yeah. Did he have a bad temper? Uh, he did it one time. He did, yeah. What did, what did, did you have any nicknames for him? The Jim? I yeah. can't recall. Yeah, right. I can't recall. Doomy? Who? Doomy? Could be. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, there was Marlison's truck that got into it a few times. And that's how I knew Marlison never got into the temple. Just see if you were a truck or a rocket or and uh, that's because he tried to take out his deal at the bend of his throat or go like that. Yeah, the punching yeah. bag. Yeah, even the... Is that what it is? <laughs> anyway, uh, geez, it's, it's just too hard to go back. I know, I know. It's just too hard to go back. Did you ever sing a song for Jim that made him mad? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, what was that? A Jimmy Crack song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what would he do? You man. No, it's Jimmy Crack Point now. Jimmy Crack Point, and I don't care. Jimmy Crack Point, I don't care. Yeah, how's it? Yeah. What about, uh, what memories do you have from going up to uh, Arrowhead? Arrowhead? Yeah. Uh, Arrowhead. What a good time. It was near Pat Hatter, the college up there. Yeah. Yeah, we had a good time. I can't recall. Yeah. I remember Aunt Joy and Uncle Russ oh, yeah. being up there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but I can't recall. You know, you're going back 20 years. Oh, I know, I know. Yeah. I mean, ask me what I did last week. What did you do last week? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, what about um, when we got to Jamila and you started meeting all the neighbors? Yeah. What did you think of the neighbors? They're all good. Yeah. Like yeah. What about Mrs. Bukey? Uh, <laughs> no, not Mrs. Bukey. Don't play that friend of Bukey's stuff. <laughs> no. Well, she used to make you cookies and stuff. Oh, yeah, sure. She would uh, wash her hands. <laughs> and pie. And she was a good cook, but she just never took care of herself. What <laughs> oh, uh, about... Uh, I think you went on a bike, uh, motorcycle ride with somebody one night, didn't you? Oh yeah, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, 
but that was really all right. Leroy, Leroy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just getting the wind blowing in the trees. Oh. Anyway, uh, they had a few drinks that night. Of course, this jig was a pain in the butt. It was? This jig was a pain in the butt. So anyway, when I went on the back of that bike with Leroy right that night, I had a few beers, which I don't, use. I don't think you get those on the truck. Maybe once or twice over a period of 30 years. And uh, I made the comment when I got back at this, yeah, the Miss Jiggy didn't even look at me for me. She never come over again. No, no, I remember her coming over all the time. And that's Maybe. why I said that. Oh, no, really? No, that's why I said that thing for me. What about uh, the Trits? What do you think of them? Yeah, I like the Trits, they're nice. No, in other words, <laughs> he, was, he was another uh, 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 All in Family star, uh, what the hell is his name? Carol, Carol O'Connor? Carol O'Connor, yeah. yeah. He, he was another Carol O'Connor. Yeah. And, uh, but I still, he, he always gave me a hard time, but Norm was a good person. You know, he used to show up like that. They come and do work for me and stuff like that. And of course, now I'm getting, uh, no, but what else? Um, what, what did you, how did the A to Z driving school do? Yeah. How come that ended? Uh, 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 it was good. Did it end? Why did it end? Because we had no business at the time. Oh. Uh, got very slow. That's when I went back to driving the buses. Yeah, it got very slow. So, uh. Actually, you almost had to work at that 10, 12 hours a day. Yeah. And mom always had to answer the point, you really like doing that. But uh, it was good. It was good. It was a good business. Of course, if I had known that the kids the schools, the schools were going to take it out of the schools right now, I should have stayed in it. If you knew what? If the schools were going to take that driver's head out of the schools. Oh, yeah. I could have made a fortune. Yeah. yeah. But I, I'm, I'm not sure for the life I had left, uh, really. I love driving a bus. I love meeting people from other countries. And, uh, of course, I like the chips afterwards, so. It was good, though. The drawer of plenty? Huh? The drawer of plenty? Well, of plenty? The drawer of plenty. The drawer, the drawer of plenty? No, I, I, had I my, dipped into that I many had times. I had my shoe. I had my shoe. <laughs> <laughs> Two guys from Colorado. Or, uh, Canada. Oh, Canada? Oh, they made them. I think they were hitchhiking. Yeah, and I invited them to see at the house. They were good kids. They were nice boys, yeah. What about Michiko? The Michiko, I met on my bus. He turned out to be a good pen pal and a good friend. Yellow devil? He's not a yellow devil. <laughs> I won't show her that either. Huh? I won't show no, her that. No, no, I don't know if you'll ever see her, okay. yeah. But, uh... No, Miss Go is nice. A good pen tail. She can write better than me. The Japanese. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, uh, uh, well. Well, um, what do you think? People that couldn't stay at it. Yeah. You know, if you can't stay at it, why bother? Yeah. I got out with you one time, and then six months later, and a year later, I got out with you again. Yeah. I did have fun, though, at the, uh, at the, uh, hey, I'm at the one across the, across the walk, uh, yeah. part three. So, so, you want to do that? You want to kind of go through each kid and say what you want to say to him, and then we'll pick it up later and add to it if we want? Yeah, yeah, good, but, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what's cool about this? Huh? You know what's neat about this is that when when they when they have kids and they ask about you, you'll, they'll be able to see you. Yeah. Now, yeah. what would you say to to your great great grandkids? Um, well, I don't know. You know, uh, the other day I saw each other something to uh, Kitty. For her birthday, but she says, Papa, guess what? Papa Pietro sent me. I said, What? He said, $100. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
See, and I'm getting this through her good now, see? Yeah, yeah. I wasn't hearing it there, I thought something was wrong. And sometimes when I was in the growth course, I used to do that and it would come back. Yeah, it's fine. It's really good. Yeah? It's really good. What, what would you want to say to Carol and about her life and how she's done and how things are going and things from the past? Carol, I'm very proud of. She's been a great daughter, been a great mother. Uh, she finally got married uh, three or four years ago to Ross, which uh, seems to be all right with him. And, uh, and that's the main thing, and of course, uh, her her, uh, her child, uh, her daughter Joey, is a fine daughter and a great mother. With uh, with uh, with Hannah and Zach, uh, Pete's a nice guy. Uh, I'm, pr I'm proud of all of them. I'm proud of uh, of uh, uh, of uh, Pat Patty. She's been a great daughter, especially right now when I'm sick. She's taking me here and taking me there. Uh, never any questions, Dad, if you need me, I'm here with you, you know. So I'm very proud of her and I'm proud of her daughters, Lauren and Alex. Uh, Lauren's going to college and of course Alex will be going to college as well. Uh, I'm proud of, uh, of, uh, I was proud of Jim, he's a good son. And uh, unfortunately he passed away some years ago, but he's a great son. And we didn't always see that eye, I think, but I'd say years before he passed away, we were very good. Yeah. We were very good friends. Uh, dad, dad and father and son and, and friends, you know. And then there was uh, Terry's a very good daughter. Uh, uh, I wish she'd go to church a little bit more, I think she does. And to the Canon goes as well. And Dan, although I don't think Dan really believes too much in Jesus, at least that's what he tells me. I kind of like seeing him go. And uh, there comes Mary Alice. And I'm very proud of her. And uh, she married a wonderful guy, she married Mike. Uh, her first decision wasn't too good. Uh, her daughter Heather and her son Brandon are great kids. Uh, Mark is a great grandson, and I, I wish that Mary Alice would, uh, and of course Mike's a great uh, son-in-law, and Mary Alice is a great daughter, although I'd like to see her go to church a little bit more. Maybe even talk to a priest about having the uh, next, you know, an annulment in her first marriage. Because they were both on stuff, and they could probably get, get an annulment, you know. Uh, then comes uh, Chuck. I wish I could see more of Chuck. But Chuck is where I'm going to be for the spread of drive for him and for me. <coughs> and I know he puts down a lot of miles through the week. So I really don't expect him to come out to the house. <coughs> and then there's my son Steve who, uh, you know, uh, is, a, is a loving son. And, uh, I wasn't too happy, and Marilyn and I were, Bev and I weren't too happy when he came to Baptist. Uh, I know the, the minister that uh, leaned him over to put one of us said I almost fell in the water with him because Steve weighed so much. And, uh, but he's a great son, great father, great husband, and I'm proud of all of them. And uh, I wish them uh, the best all through life, their lifetime. And at that time, I'll say goodbye and I'm going home away. What do you look forward to? I look forward to seeing you all in heaven someday. So I, get, I want to see all of you as well. You know, I want to see Butch and my mom, and dad, Bev, Jim, everybody. You know, all the ones that went ahead of me. As a matter of fact, I would say, I'm not present now, I would say, watch over my loved ones through the night. Watch over my friends and neighbors and those who are going to die tonight, grant them grace and happy death. And uh, also uh, forgive those who have injured me and for those I have injured. 
And I see my outside in there. That's it. What about uh, Barbara? Barbara? Oh yeah, Barbara, sure, yeah. Barbara's great. Aunt Pat was great. And I know that Barbara's going to into a lot of problems with Sarah right now, but maybe someday it'll all work out and they'll become good, good friends. No, no. Did you want to say anything about um, Linda and Kaylee? And uh, Linda, yes. Yeah, Linda's a great journalist. And uh, I love Kaylee and I love Kyle. Of course, I love Chuck. And uh, I hope to see all of them someday as well. You know? I'm not too sure if Chuck goes to Mass at that church just around the corner, but I'll be able to keep the union and that Sunday at the, uh, at the funeral. I thought, well, maybe, maybe he's going and maybe he's not going. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, you didn't go to that day, did you? Which church? Huh? Which church? St. Francis. By Chuck's house? No, the one that was that kind of fast funeral was at. Did I go to that church ever? No, I didn't. Did you go to the reunion that day? No, I didn't go. Oh. <clears throat> I don't think, I think Chuck got blessed. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh. I think he went up there and did this thing. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, good. Oh, you got that on there? Yeah. Yeah, but I'd like it if you could take the, the body of Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. What was that? I'd like to see him get the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, yeah. receive it in the Holy Communion. Yeah. But that's up to him. Yeah. What about... Uh, he likes to serve a lot, so I guess that's why he never goes to church. He what? He likes to serve. Well, that's his church, probably. He'll thank God for the water. <laughs> that's what they way I feel. You know, that they do, uh, they do take the Lord back into this, their hearts. You know, so that they will be saved as well. Yeah. You know, and that's when they'll be able to see and understand. And all that is, all that changes when he comes into your heart. You can really yeah. understand things. Yeah. Um, did you want to say anything about Anne and the girls? Oh yeah, no. I'm talking about Anne and the girls. God, <laughs> Jeez. they're great. Elena's is great. Megan's great. Uh, Marissa's great. Julia's great. Uh, Van, is, Van is great. And she's done a wonderful job as a mother and a wife, I would assume. And uh, <coughs> I, I know that these guys always grow up <coughs> good kids because the movie is very beautiful. So, uh, yeah, yeah. They're good. I, I love them. Yeah, and they know I love them. Yeah, they yeah. do. They do. And of course, uh, getting down and down to the uh, to the facts of life, you know. Of course, I've said to see many times in the past week is I'm going home, which home is at seven. Yeah. And uh, and uh, I just want you to know that, that even though I'm going through this deal right now with the with the breathing problems and. Uh, and stuff like that. Uh, my time could be getting close, but I don't know. Mm. I just want to say that before I leave, that I love all of you, and that whatever happens will happen. That's it. You'll be waiting at the gate. Yeah. And uh, that uh, I hope to be married. I uh, hope to be uh, uh, buried uh, at my mass at St. Mary's Church. And of course, I have the papers for the uh, mortuary that I've been paid for. And I hope that the uh, money is uh, given out to trust uh, uh, and uh, the sale of the house will uh, give uh, pay some financial freedom. And of course, you and the rest of the, uh, rest of the kids. Uh, Jim Clark goes to Scotty, you know, and if Scotty wants to be a part of it, then to the family that you are. I think you can do that. So, uh, uh, that's all I had to say. Just, uh, just uh, I don't know what it'll amount to. I think, uh, I think between the sale of the house and the, uh, and the iris I have and the, and the CDs, probably about 
250000 something like that. It doesn't matter. No. You have to pay tax on anything you have never anyway. So, uh, but that's determined by them. You can take care of it, you know. So. Well, nobody cares about the money. I know. I'd rather, uh, I'd rather be here and spend it myself. What? <laughs> All I want is the drawer. I might, of plenty. Go on, I might go on another cruise. I want one thing. You want my shoe? The drawer of plenty. Who? Oh, the, the drawer, drawer of plenty. plenty. <laughs> <laughs> Can we give Pop the hug, Megan? Yeah. Do I have to? Man. She won't be able to play with me. Goo 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 I love you, honey. I love you, too. Well, so how much money are we going to get? About 250000 no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got that off? No. I want to catch... I want to hear it play back. I want to hear some of your secrets. My secrets? After you leave, I'm going to go in the mirror and tell that one secret. <laughs> <laughs> You can put it yours. No, I can't. Clip right. yourself. That's huh? called clipping your toenails. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a foreign concept to you, but some people actually clip their own toenails. Well, you know what? You know what I was just drawing my big toes. Yeah. Did I ever tell you? Because when I, before I went to service, mom was just a cop. You know. Your mom? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I was eighteen. <laughs> <laughs> Your so, mom cut your toenails till you were 18? Well, I was 17 or whatever. But anyway, when I went to service, <laughs> instead of going straight across, I dig in. Oh. And of course, that's why I ended up with the ingrown toenails. Oh. Of course, I had the one taken out this way here about 10 years ago. I should have this one taken out too. Yeah. But there were times when in Chicago, you were walking home, I had to walk on my heels to hurt me so bad. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, and why did you why did you lose your teeth? What happened there? You have to tell that to them. They know that. You used to stick through <laughs> your teeth out on them. No, I didn't. Yeah, didn't you? I never did that. I used to do it to you, but not them. No, I did. <laughs> no, it's just that there was a uh, a name by uh, something named Pyrea that the doctor thought he could fix for a thousand dollars. Well, at that time, you two were just thinking about twenty thousand. Yeah, yeah. We had a thousand dollars for a lot of these kids, you know. Yeah. So I just said, but after I get home from a date or the next day, the girls are telling me, say, were you bleeding or something? I say, what do you have that? Because she said, I have blood on my, on my face or on my chin or whatever. Oh, so you were necking? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I go looking, what's cooking? Chicken, you want neck? <laughs> what? So, uh, so anyway, I just said, take them off. Yeah. I couldn't go through that. But you know something? I haven't had a toothache in 60 years. <laughs> what did he say? He hasn't had a toothache in 60 years. <laughs> no, 50 years. Yeah, 50. 55 years. Yeah. I don't know how I could have forgotten this, but going back to after I got through with Cherry, and speaking about how much I love her, Everything, but I forgot my first biological daughter, her house, who was my honey bunny booty boo boo. Huh? And of course, she was married, and I was uh, born on the first, first 27th of January. But that morning, we got up, and I had to take the snow off my windshield to get into the hospital. And of course, and of course, all the others just became my biological children as well. Because you can't have, for as many years as I had them, and to say that they were not biological, but I thought of them as, as biological. I'm sure they knew that. Yeah. And I'm sure they accepted me too as their father back many years before that. So uh, I just wanted to bring that up about the honey bunny boo boo. Okay? So uh, they all ranked uh, first, second, and third, but she was number one. Who? No. Uh, Meryl. What about and me? Steve, Steve, uh, what, what about, hey.
<laughs> so, uh, anyway, I just thought I'd get that in there. Because right. I want you to have a little laugh on the stuff, okay? Okay, so that, that, that's it. Yeah, and of course, Haley's uh, a good girl, and uh, I'm sure I don't get down to see them as much as I should, but uh, it's just it's just right now with the, the driving, and uh, I'm not feeling good, so. Uh, but we did get down in Barbara's a lot years ago, and down there at Pat's house, and uh, when I first, uh, Joy's first visit out here to California. Joy and Russ I liked as well. Bob Walsh, of course, uh, of course, he didn't give me the golf clubs I wanted. He gave them to, he gave them to Pete. It was the truck, I'm not sure, but anyway, he, he gave me one of them, he never gave me any. Although he did give me the golf clubs I got, but I keep looking for a better set. And he said, I asked him, I said, would you drag it ahead? He said, no. So thanks a lot, Bob. <laughs> Anything else? When we get to heaven, I said, I'll, I'll have the, my own golf clubs up there. We'll play a match. Probably beat you too. It would have to be heaven in that case. Huh? But that would be heaven. Oh, yeah, that would be heaven, <laughs> yeah. I'll play that for Barbara too. So when you do that, you get, um, There's pictures in his room.
Oh, yeah. Get your what? My brown sweater. Okay. It's in the back of my car. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, there's a problem here. What's this wrong? Okay. You gotta I'm look up. Sure so to fill in. You gotta look up so we can see your face. You wanted to talk about Vin, uh, the kids there. Uh, what is that stuff right there? That's what you mentioned on the phone, who you forgot. Yeah, I wanted to mention my, my brother's son and his wife and his family. They are great kids. I'm very proud of them. And, uh, and uh, all of a sudden, they just all joined uh, myself and mom and everybody in heaven. Okay? Okay. Uh, Mike McCauley. Mike McCauley, uh, Mike and I always have, have a close relationship. Uh, I tried to have one with Jackie, but it just didn't work out. And, uh, the only thing I feel bad about is that I've talked this over with, with, my, with Mike many times is that if it comes to money, whatever he owes Mike, Jackie, pay him and be, and be brothers once again. Because you can't say you love Jesus and not love your brother, especially with heaven. Also, the same thing we said for Chris. And they say they're not talking, they should be talking. Yeah. And, uh, and of course, then Carol and all the other girls, uh, Brenda, Duran, uh, I was proud of all those kids, they were all great kids. I loved their mother, I loved their, uh, their, uh, their uncle Alden, and uh, the three girls that, uh, that uh, Lynn Carroll's had, they're all teachers now, which is very good. I love Mike Feeney. He really bugs me out when I'm playing golf. He bugs you? Yeah, when I'm playing golf. Uh, <laughs> he tries to give me instructions and I do bad every time he does that. So, Go. So anyway, uh, yeah, Mike is like I say, he used to bug me playing golf. But he's a great guy. Uh, I'm sure he's been a great husband to this girl and uh, a good father. <coughs> Hope to see him on July the 3rd. If they come out, I'm not sure whether they will or not, but I hope they, hope they make it. Better yeah. job to those kids, I think she's out of her mind. But that's what she wanted to do, and uh, it's probably better for the kids if they're with her and not with their mother and father. So, uh, she took on a big job, but uh, she can handle it. And I, I like her husband, uh, uh, I, I can't think of his name. But, but uh, whatever his name is, you really like him. Terry, yeah, Terry. Yeah. Patty uh, and Terry? Uh, the other thing I didn't like him is I was trying to kiss me. You what? I was trying to kiss me. I thought he was gay. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they're all up and saying, I'm sorry I didn't say well enough to go there and visit him. But, uh, yeah, that's where it goes. Uh, Mitchell. What about Michiko? A great friend, a great pen pal. <laughs> She's come down and spent a time in our house a few times.
No, it's only because of uh, that uh, we, we ran the safe last week is because I was feeling so badly. I even thought I was going to pass away sometime last weekend, but as is what happened Monday morning, Tuesday morning, I felt great. So uh, you just don't know, you know, from one day to the next whether you're going to be good or bad. Yeah. But I was uh, very grateful that it was good. So uh, uh, as long as I stay on this four leader, I'm all right. And I'm going to get a hospital bed next week, so it makes it easier for me to sleep at night. So I can kind of put up right so I can do my props as much. And uh, then we'll see where it goes from there, Steve. All right. You know, uh, we're going to have a lung capacity. I don't know uh, just exactly what that means, but I just have to take the doctor's uh, diagnosis. And of course, now there's Gracie, too. My, my, my little friend, Gracie. You know that picture, Gracie? Yeah, oh, there's Gracie right here. There's Gracie right here. There's that old Gracie. <laughs> The dog only the geese could love. That's right. No, no. She's a great little dog. She's a sad me every night when I go to bed. Hi, Gracie. Yes, you are. Yes. She always cleans my nose off, too. Hi, Gracie. I could do that. <laughs> That's her tongue. <laughs> that last right there? Yeah, it's about. Yeah. So anyway, when I leave this earth, I'm going to give my torture here too, to Stephen Ann. No, we don't want that thing. I'll give it to Dan Cherry. We'll put the dog with you. How's that? No, 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 no. <laughs> don't do that, no. She won't be not be ready, ready to go at the time. But, uh, you know, I'd rather make this tape because it kind of tells all the feelings I have for everybody. Yeah, plus your past, your history. Yeah, past history, but uh, like I say, it's, it wasn't any different with any other kid growing up at that time. We were all poor, and we got through it. That's the main thing. You got a big smile? Yeah. <laughs> no, he's had a big smile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My grace is My grace is Yeah, let's see. Smile, Gracie, smile, 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 smile. Smile, Gracie, smile. All right, that's about it. Yeah. Any last words? Uh, yeah, I love all of you. I love all of you, I always have. I always will. I, I pray that God will watch over you all the time. <laughs>